Nationwide, office vacancies are at 20%, and they're increasing from here. Um, uh, and so there's a lot of ways you can unpack office, though. Just like I said, you know, maybe the truth is somewhere in the middle. It's not as bad as everyone fears, and it's not as good as everyone fears. If you look at office, new clean and green office, yeah. even in New York City, is doing exceptionally well. Like Hudson Yards is doing well, right? Like, and that one Vanderbilt thing. One question. Vanderbilt leased up to almost 100% yep. during the middle of COVID. Um, so Class B and C properties, Class B and C properties are properties that were built in the 1970s and 1980s um, uh, with so no CapEx put, cap put into it over decades and decades and decades. I, I get it. No one wants to work there. So we're sort of in this weird time period where office is struggling. I want to be clear, office is only around 20% of the CRE market. It's right. only around 3% of the U.S. listed REIT market. But look, everyone loves a great, great Greek tragedy. I get it. Like, it sells, it sells clicks. It sells papers. It is a really challenging asset class, and so I don't want to belabor that. What's the uh, lending environment like now for yeah. real estate investors? What are the banks doing where are they? Where are the real estate investors sourcing their capital? Yeah. Um, so this is probably the single most important topic when we talk about commercial real estate. The reason being that commercial real estate is an inherently levered asset class. When people buy a commercial real estate property, they put debt on it. There's not very few properties that don't have debt on it. So it is a levered asset class. Uh, and so that's actually why valuations are being pressured so much. We think property valuations generically are down around 20%. Office valuations are probably down 35%. The reason they're down so much isn't necessarily because of fundamentals. Fundamentals ex office are on pretty strong footing. It's because the right side of the balance sheet is repricing, both financing costs higher mm -hmm. and the availability of debt much lower than where it used to be. Um, so look, lenders aren't lending as much as they used to. Um, if you look at the Mortgage Bankers, uh, Mortgage Bankers Association Senior Loan, uh, uh, the, the, their uh, Loan Origination Index, mm -hmm. it's close to the lowest level since, we, since, since we've been in 2014. I get it. A lot of people have, um, uh, uh, have loans on their balance sheet and they're working through those. But you made a really good point. Distress hasn't really come about yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think there's a really important point, and I'll pause here for a second. Um, lenders and borrowers are in a pretty challenging position. So they're actually solving the prisoner's dilemma. Meaning that a bank doesn't want to own an office space. So a bank doesn't want to own it. Mm -hmm. They're not in the business of it. And guess what? The regulatory capital charges for owning a property on your balance sheet are actually higher than if you were just to modify the loan at, say, a 99% LTV. I'm being LTV. Ooh, okay. Break it down for us. Loan to value. Okay. So, so what would that mean if you if you brought that down to 99% LTV? Yeah. So let's assume 10 years ago you did a loan at a 50% LTV. So you had a, a property that was worth $10, mm -hmm. and uh, you put a loan on it was worth $5. So 50% LTV. Fast forward 10 years, the value of that property drops from 10 to 5, and you still have $5 of loan. That's 100% LTV. The regulators are actually incentivizing the banks to actually modify and extend loans. Um, so mm. some people might call it kicking the can down the road. I don't necessarily think it's kicking the can down the road. I just think borrowers and lenders are incentivized to figure out a way out of this, of this environment. It's, it's a pretty challenging environment for everyone right now. And so they are coming to a less bad situation, modifying and extending these loans. One of the things I've seen in the last 10 years is, and been amazed about, and Alex and I talk about it a lot, is the growth of private credit. Is private mm. credit coming into the real estate space to maybe just find some opportunity here? Yeah, and it, it, it has been for some time. Okay. Um, uh, I, 2015, private credit market share of total lending was probably 10% plus or minus, mm -hmm. and I'd probably say it's a little bit less than that. At the peak of the market, it was around 20% or so. But look, there is something to be said for private, for private credit finding a home within commercial real estate. There's 4,200 banks across the United States. Bank share is around 40% of total lending. Um, uh, there will be some banks that pull back for various different reasons. There has to be a home for those additional loans. And I do think private credit, um, uh, if you have the expertise not to just underwrite the loans, but work out the loans when some of them inevitably go bad, there's a home, there's a home for private credit. Do I think it's going to 50% market share? No. I sort of think the upper limits is around 20%. We're probably a little bit less than that right now, but there's a home for private credit. So when we talk about the shoe and commercial and office commercial real estate not dropping, it sounds like maybe it won't drop at all. It'll just be sort of, John Tucker's doing the wave and I don't really know why that is, but. Uh, let me uh, get yes. the confetti out. Oh, oh, we hit it. 
Ah. Uh, of course, it just came back down. Of course, it came in number for a moment. It yeah. was down forty thousand. The, the, the tick, the tick up counts. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> that it was does. amazing. Um, the shoe's not maybe going to drop. It's just going to be worked out, and then no one's going to be sitting with really terrible loans forever. Um, so this is going to take longer than what was feared a year ago. A year ago, when you had banks coming under stress, I think a lot of people were fear were fearing a, a quick collapse in commercial real estate lending. That has not occurred. This will be a slow burn over a number of years. I want to be clear, though, we are not calling for no distress in the commercial real estate market. I mentioned to you that property valuations are down around 20% right now. We are expecting them to be down peak to trough around 25 to 30%, so mm. around two-thirds of the way through. The next leg lower is going to be rising distress. And by the way, that actually might be a contrarian bullish sign. So what do I mean mm -hmm. by that? Mm -hmm. Set in the bottom, maybe? It, exactly. Right. Exactly. It basically means sellers are finally capitulating and yep. selling where buyers want to buy. That's a healthy contrarian signal. 